Hello, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If you want to know a little bit about what I do and how to get in touch with me, if you need any um, information or you want to send me topics, um, you'll find the link below in the description page. Anyway, today's video is about adoption. And this was inspired by someone who sent me a video of a lady who was um, adopted. She's now 43. Um, she's been, she had a British citizenship in 1983. But when she went to apply for it um, just a couple of years ago, she was refused. Um, I'm going to show you the video. It came out in 2018, so I'm assuming that she applied for her British passport in 2017 and was rejected. She seems to think, or what the newspaper headline seemed to think, she was caught up in the Windrush. I'm not so sure. Um, I'll give my views after I've shown you the video. But basically, um, she's born in Canada. Um, she was adopted in Canada um, to British citizens, but I believe they were naturalised citizens. Don't quote me on that, but I believe they were naturalised citizens. Anyway, um, they came back, they decided to come back to the UK when she was eight. And I'm not quite sure why she waited until 1983 to apply for her first passport. Maybe she just didn't decide to travel until then. But she applied for her first passport when she was 20 and she was successful. Um, further down the line, um, I think up to two years ago, 2017 roughly, she applied for a renewal of that passport and she was denied. Here's another situation of EEC um, parents being unable to get citizenship for their adopted children. And I'll read a little bit about that. And there's also an American gay couple, male, who have two children and the second child is unable to get citizenship. The second child was um, created through a fertilised egg and um, what else? They are originally Israeli born, but they do have British, they do have US citizenship. I think it was probably through marriage. Um, three years later, they, they had one child and then they've had this second child through a sur surrogate mother and the complications with that getting that child a US citizenship is that there's supposed to be some kind of biological connection and what the US are claiming is that there was biological connection in the sense that he fertilized the egg but he hadn't been in the UK in the, he hadn't been in the US resident for five years now that what they're saying is that with this particular situation is that because they are both US citizens, whether it's naturalised, I'm beginning to think that naturalised citizens are playing a big part in why there's a distinction. I believe now from what Trump is saying is that if you're a naturalised citizen, they have a discretion as to how they treat you and what rights you are entitled to. So anyway might be wrong and remember I'm doing this video I'm I'm not offering legal or professional advice uh, in any jurisdiction and if you do need advice on adoption or immigration please contact a professional and responsible and recognized immigration lawyer and you can get those from the um, law society from the government website www.gov.uk or from the home office they all put, provide authentic immigration lawyers who are recommended okay having said that on that background i'm going to show you the video if it comes up yeah And it is swirling. Okay. I've just grown up here in Cornwall for the last 48 years. I was born in Hamilton, Canada in 1963. When 
I was five years old, I was adopted by my British parents, who were living in Canada and working at the time. I was adopted into a wonderful family. When I was eight, they decided they wanted to move back to England so we could grow up with cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents. So we came over on SS Bremen, one of the last ocean-going liners. So I applied in October to renew my passport. And this whole situation, it just feels it's got out of control. Since October, I've been through every emotion possible. I was upset, I was angry. In all sense of purposes, my parents are my parents. So that makes me a British citizen. I feel like I'm being punished for being adopted. It's a little step, but in the wrong direction. I said, I'm not going to apply for citizenship. I'm already a British citizen. I said, I just want them to acknowledge that and give me a passport. It's jobs worth just ticking boxes, not looking at individual cases. What's interesting is that she said jobs worth just looking at um, ticking boxes and not um, looking at individual cases, but that is the cry of everyone, not just her. It is a tick box exercise. It's not even a tick box exercise anymore. It's done through algorithms and all sorts. So there is no personal touch. Um, also, she said her parents were British citizens, but I think, no, she said they're British. But there is a distinction between a naturalised Brit and an indigenous Brit. So I think that might have something to do with the um, decision, although it shouldn't. And um, yeah, I just go through my notes now. Um, technically, adopted children or surrogate children should be viewed as though born of the parents to get British citizenship. Um, there are issues with ancestral information, which it causes complications. And when you go online, it doesn't give you the option, really. It can, it's not, the, the form isn't designed for adopted or surrogate um, children because it doesn't give you options like if you was going to say, are you adopted? Um, what's the name of your adopter? And you know, that kind of information. I mean, and also they would need to have discretion because you cannot go um, for seeking out original parents when you're adopted. It's very sensitive. So there should be some kind of, um, that should be factored in to the online forms, but I don't think it is. As, when, as of when this was done, I don't think it had been. They might have amended it, I'm not quite sure. Um, so forms discriminate against children who are adopted or birthed through surrogates because of the questions about name of parents. No options, as far as I know, for adopted or surrogate applications. Um, so this kind of situation, it crosses all racial boundaries because, you know, this kind of situation, all kinds of people adopt. But you know what I think is interesting is that, you know, in a lot of the Caribbean countries, they send their children over to be looked after by guardians, by aunts, by uh, grandmothers. And in that kind of situation, these children or those children would be very vulnerable because if the parent isn't there, and these children are in the country and they're in the country because they've been looked after by someone else. How do they get their citizenship, even if they were here for years and years and years? That's going to be difficult. Also, I wondered whether or not that um, those parents registered the child, because sometimes if you adopt a child, you're not necessarily going to know that you need to register the child unless they're going to be unless they're going to travel so i assume when they when she went to travel that's when she got a british passport based on a certain set of criteria at that time which was 1983 and it was just about the time of before the british nationality act was passed when things changed so i'm wondering if when they um 
when they originally came over when she was five years old which i think was in she was born in 1963 probably about 1968 whether they actually registered her birth and registered her as a citizen then because if they had she would not have got her passport based on eligibility in another way so i'm just trying to kind of think about why she um, might have been rejected this is just my thoughts and my opinions it's not facts and like i said i'm not an immigration lawyer so i'm just putting it out there so um the lady was born in canada um i think they were canadian but they were then naturalized to brits i'm not sure but that would make a difference now when she's applying for a passport um so came back eight years old came back to uk as a family 30 plus years later she applies for a passport but it's denied and um i think i asked myself is is this because naturalized citizens are now being discriminated against or being treated with discretion i should say the headlines say she was caught up in the Windrush generation, but I do not think that is the case unless they mean by that um, applications are subject to more scrutiny. And if they're subject to more scrutiny, less people are likely to get through who used to get through before. Um, she obtained her first passport in 1983, age 20, tried to renew it in the October. This video came out in May 2018, so I presume she tried to renew it in October 2017 as a 40 plus adult. Um, and I was wondering whether the Jobsworths, as she calls them, were assessing her application on her place of birth. Because when you're submitting your application and you got Canada, that's automatically going to say, well, you're not a British citizen. And if they hadn't registered her, that is another reason why they might think, OK, these are her parents. But then I've got a funny feeling I read somewhere that they were Canadians, but British, British um, nationals now. Anyway, <clears throat> I asked myself the question, did the adoptive parents notify the Home Office that they had adopted her? It's not something I would have thought about unless I was planning to travel. The Hague Convention on Adoption states that a British citizen parent can pass their British citizenship onto any child that they have. And what I was wondering, I wasn't sure whether this would be through registration or whether it'd be automatic. I think it's only automatic if the adoption takes place in the UK and the parents who are adopting are settled at least one of them are settled in the uk i think that way it can be automatic i'm not quite sure whether they register that they probably have to find that out but i do believe it's automatic because it was almost if it's being treated as though an adoptive child is like a biological child that would mean as long as one of the parents have settled status and that child is bought is adopted in the country that would be automatic um in the cases of adoption it would appear that it now depends on whether a citizen is naturalized or not i could be wrong um and like i said i'm not offering legal or professional advice and under any jurisdiction so always get seek immigration advice a british passport was also refused for an adopted child of an eea citizen <clears throat> under the british nationality act 1981 status of the parents at the time of the birth is relevant um so um not quite sure whether because you're from the eec or that person was from the eec and wasn't a british citizen why that made a difference even though they might have adopted them in the uk not sure these are just i'm just throwing ideas out there you can do your own research and make your own inquiries in the challenge to reduce net migration it would appear that the home office is exercising their rights to use discretion when it comes to naturalized brits because that is what the us is doing and whatever the us does the britain tends to follow suit 
Online application forms are not designed to accommodate adopted surrogate children as the birth certificates of birth families are not always available. Looked after children face the same dilemma and looked after children are not the same as um, people who send their children over to be looked after like aunts and uncles um, looked after children are those who have been taken away from their parents because of by the social workers because of some kind of safeguarding issue effect that might adversely affect the child in the home so section 15 of the adoption provisions in the British Nationality Act 1981 applies to UK adoptions, including Channel Islands, Isle of Man, British territories, and certain UK adoptions, such as the Hague Convention, but only if one of the adoptive parents is a British citizen. And it doesn't specify whether naturalised, which I think it should. I think legislation should include naturalized citizens because at the moment like i said on the passport if you're not naturalized you have totally different set of rights than people born in the country so i think that distinction should be put there because it's giving a false impression um okay let me see what else i've got here um in the case where an adoption falls into this criteria including most overseas adoptions as in the case of the lady in the video um, or uk adoptions by non-uk citizens as might be the case with the eea citizen who was refused then a child should be registered under section 31 of the British Nationality Act 1981 if the child is not already a British citizen although registering a child this way could have adverse implications so please seek the advice of an immigration lawyer um, this will allow the Secretary of State to register any child as British but application has to be made before the child is 18 what are the rules for immigration status of an adopted person where access to information about birth ancestors is limited? The Adoption and Children Act 2002, as well as the European Convention on Human Rights, state that the adopted child is to be treated and gains all rights and entitlement of a biological child. So there shouldn't be any distinction. Like I said, providing the parents are British citizens settled in the UK, there shouldn't be any discri discrimination. But like I said, it is at the discretion of the Home Office if citizens are naturalised. Um, EEA treaty rights state that children born in the UK to EEA citizens with permanent residency are automatically British. There's no mention, no mention is made regarding adoption, surrogacy and nor should it if they are to be treated as if they were the biological children of their parents. Um, this is not intent. Oh, I kept on that. Options for parents who have settled status in the UK prior to adoption. Getting citizenship for their children is to apply for a nationality status certificate. Nationality status certificate will cost £94. All you need is to show that your eligibility, your legal status in the UK, your adoption papers, inf about information about the parents of the child if it's at hand, and the original birth certificate of the child. And then there's a little, maybe a supporting statement. And I got this off of um, the website. It was an immigration board and I'll put the link below. But according to section 67, this is what you write in or type in when you're doing this um, nationality status certificate as your supporting reason for getting one is according to the section 61, 67 in bracket one. Let me read that again. According to section 67, in bracket one, close bracket, of the Adoption and Children Act 2002, the adopted child should be treated in law as if both, as if born to you, as a person settled in the UK prior to adoption. That's what you would write as your support, because this should be sufficient for your child to acquire British citizenship. I was just wondering though, um, I wonder why people go through all this, paying all of this money for British citizenships and all that, when you can just 
get a nationality status certificate. And that's only 94 quid. I mean, it's still a lot of money for some people, but, you know, it's still better than the thousands. I wonder why people don't do that. Anyway, um, nearly there, nearly there. Passport office guidance says the only persons who can acquire British citizenship automatically by adoption are those who did not hold British citizenship prior to adoption, e.g. the lady in the video, and are legally adopted in the UK, which she was not. So she, that she had two counts against her in this. That's why I said it's not related to the Windrush. She did not hold British citizenship prior to adoption and she was not adopted in the UK. She was adopted in Canada. So, but and um, sorry to break that up. Um, let me just read that again. The only persons who can acquire British citizenship automatically by adoption are those who did not hold a British citizenship prior to adoption and are legally adopted in the UK by an adopter who is a British citizen at the date of adoption. So that one doesn't even say settled status. It said a citizen. So you need to have citizenship by the looks of it. But once again, it doesn't distinguish whether or, it, whether or not it's naturalised citizenship or indigenous. So um, her rejection could be because adoption didn't take place in the UK and she wasn't born in the UK. And if the parents with naturalised British citizenship, that would be three strikes. But with the latter one, I'm not quite sure. In America, uh, citizens to foreign-born children is not constitutional. Oh, this is what I was talking about. In America, citizenship for foreign-born children is not a constitutional enshrined right for either the US citizen or the child seeking to acquire citizenship. Rather, it is a right granted by Congress. And that is why I wondered whether or not um, naturalised is discretionary. And the reason why that came up was because there was a gay couple. There is a gay couple. They're suing the state because they born in Israel. Both of them are citizens. One of them is um was came to the uk in 1980 not the uk went to the um entered the us in 1982 and got the citizenship did i write it down somewhere so i've got this i don't know if i have maybe i haven't yeah let me just read this because No, those are my little notes. But anyway, basically, one of them, well, they're both born in Israel. One of them went to America in 1981, got the British, got the US citizenship, then married this other guy um, who came to the US in 2015. And he got his, no, married him in 2012, I think. Don't quote me on the dates. Um, and he got his um, American citizenship in 2015, I believe. Uh, why didn't I write this down? No, sorry, sorry. Okay, um, Adiel moved to the USA in 2015. This was the second one. This is the guy he married and became US citizenship. US citizen in 2019, which is four years. Now, he's the one who gave his um, egg to a surrogate mother. And um, yeah, so he got his citizenship based on marriage. That's why he got his citizenship so quickly. But what the US is saying is that he doesn't fulfill the five years residency status. So even though he's the, oh, he's the only one, what they're saying is the reason why they're rejecting the child's um, citizenship is because um, the child wasn't born in the US and the person who gave the egg, who is the bi biological parent out of the two, is that hasn't been in the US for five years. 
So that's what the basis they're saying that they are um, rejecting the citizenship. So what these two gentlemen are saying is that number one, and it's similar to the UK um, legislation, if two people are married, whether it's a gay couple or a heterosexual couple, any child born during that marriage is deemed to be a child of the family. So therefore, it shouldn't matter that his he hasn't been in the US for five years. And that's why they're suing. So that's a little bit. I'm sure I've got the link so you can read the story. So I'll put that in. I just wanted to make sure that I... Um, I'll just read out my notes. It might make some sense. Is the US dis dis Department discriminating against the same-sex married couples or are they treating the child as though she was adopted? Yeah, because there's two, there's different, there's different ways of um, treating individual cases. So it does appear that they're treating the child as though she was adopted, even though she's a surrogate child. And even though in all of this, there should be no discrimination at all, that, that child is biologically theirs from the time they've adopted or a surrogate. There shouldn't be all this kind of investigating what's what and who's who. Of course, for legitimacy, but they're bound to have the surrogate papers and they're bound to have, and for people who have adoption papers, they're going to have the adoption papers. And that should suffice. There shouldn't be all this other interrogation. Um, so neither the child nor his parents were born in the United States. Parents were born in Israel. Child was born in Canada. The donated egg and one partner sperm. So the child wasn't born in, Canada, in the United States either, and nor were the two, nor was the married couple, even though they are American citizens now. If they're naturalized citizens, why do they need to meet a five-year residency requirement? Like I said, these are just my thoughts, questions I'm asking out loud. Technically, the five-year requirement is not meant to apply to children of married US citizens, or are they making a distinction between naturalized and indigenous citizens? And then I put Adil moved to the US in 2015 and became a US citizen in January 2019 through marriage, I believe. Um, Ro Roe, who's his partner, lived in the US since 1982 and became a US citizen in 2001. They married in California in 2013. State Department apparently denies the legitimacy of a gay family. Oh my God, that is that is really treading on rocky ground, isn't it? Anyway, um, so that's the background of that. Um, what else have I got? The USA Immigration and Nationality Act does not require a child born during the parent's marriage to demonstrate a biological relationship with both of their married partners. Back, yeah, married parents. Similar to the UK, a child born during the marriage is a suitably child of both parents. And so I hope you can make sense of what I was saying and I hope it's a bit useful. Like I said, always get advice from an immigration lawyer. Um, I am not qualified in that realm, but you know, when people send me stuff, I like to do a little bit of research and share my thoughts and opinions on it. So it's not factual you always have to go um, and find out. I do put in some helpful links to help you um, at least and have some understanding of where I got my understanding from. And yeah, I throw in a few little of my own commentary as well. So I hope some of you have found it useful and that's all for now. Bye bye.